The Eye is perhaps the most mysterious and powerful entity in the world of Little Nightmares, but for something that is referenced so many times, we barely know anything about it. In this video, I'm going to offer a number of possible theories, thinking points and clues as to what exactly the Eye represents in the Little Nightmares series. Spoiler warning for Little Nightmares, there could be spoilers for any of the Little Nightmares games, comics or anything to do with the franchise in this video. Now before we get into the meat of this video, I have a confession. I don't know what the Eye is. Yes, yes, I know, but before you click off the video, hear me out. I don't think we are supposed to know. I think this is supposed to be something mysterious, something we could never work out if we tried, something that would drive us mad if we attempted to unravel what it means, and don't worry, that ties into one of my possible theories. But I think the eye is supposed to be something abstract, something that you come up with your own meaning for. This is consistent with most of my previous theories, where I've always stated that you can take your own interpretation of many different things we see in these games. However, unlike my previous theories, I can't quite seem to settle on one theory for the eye that I prefer over the others. That being said, I have a number of possibilities for the eye, and one that I don't think anyone else has come up with yet. So why is the eye important in the first place? Well, it is simply everywhere. You can't go five minutes in a Little Nightmares game without seeing some reference to the eye. It's crafted into furniture, its iconography decorates almost every surface in the games, it's used to spy on people, to stop people escaping, it's referenced by many of the enemies, and even Six seems to make the camera blink like an eye when she puts on the yellow raincoat. So it's clearly important to the series in some way. So where did this symbology originate from? Well, it's possible that like many things in Little Nightmares, it was inspired by Studio Ghibli. Little Nightmares, especially the first game, was heavily inspired in part by Ghibli movies. You can see a number of similarities, particularly to Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle. In fact, I could probably fill a whole video on the amount of references between the games and the movies. But tucked away in this scene, we see an eye symbol placed on a number of these packages. So a potential inspiration, sure, but the eye is much more prominent in Little Nightmares. It seems to be very important, and potentially even tied to the reason why the world of Little Nightmares is so twisted. So let's get into my first theory. The eye is an eldritch horror. This is something that I haven't really delved into properly yet, but the world of Little Nightmares shares a lot with some Lovecraftian works. The world originally created by H.P. Lovecraft has had many different authors contribute to it over the years, but there is always a theme that links the works together. Lovecraftian horror is based on the idea that there are otherworldly beings, sometimes referred to as Elder Gods, that in one way or another meddle with the universe and even on our own planet. The general theme of these eldritch horrors is that they are so far above our comprehension that they usually drive humans to madness. Even looking at some of them is enough to drive most people insane. They tend to twist and distort the world around them, and they are often so mysterious that few people have actually encountered one and lived to tell the tale. The world of Little Nightmares shares a number of similarities with Lovecraftian horror. The eye monster in Little Nightmares 2 definitely bears a resemblance to a Shoggoth. Many people have pointed out the similarities between the King in Yellow and Six, and if you want to go full conspiracy theorist, there is even a Lovecraftian monster named the Bubble Creature. Coincidence? I think not. But the idea that the eye could be Lovecraftian in nature makes a lot of sense. After all, the people in the world of Little Nightmares seem to have been driven mad. I've often stated that the world seems like it was once normal, or at least more normal than it is now anyway. There are many things that hint to this that I have mentioned in previous videos, but look around the Pale City. This definitely feels like a city that fell to madness of the Signal Tower, and not a city that was always like this. We also don't seem to fully understand why the adults of this world seem to fall so easily to hunger or to the influence of the TV signal. Is it possible that the signal tower was just amplifying the voice of an eldritch horror? Another common theme of Lovecraftian monsters is the sea. Often they will reside under the sea, and many Lovecraftian horrors describe how islands or coastal towns tend to fall prey to these monsters more often. Is it possible that the moor, a giant structure that descends into the sea, stumbled across one? Perhaps this is how the eldritch horror managed to take a hold of the people in this world in the first place. We have far more evidence for this though. Eyes are a common feature of Lovecraftian horror, in both the literal sense and the metaphorical one. Eyes represent what we see, but that is also a metaphor in itself. You could say that the eye also represents what we know. Many Lovecraftian horrors describe the process of people who begin to learn about the Elder Gods, and sometimes this is described as having your eyes opened. In fact, that phrase, having your eyes opened, doesn't mean literally, it means finally understanding something, and many people who investigate the Elder Gods are driven to madness by what they see, and then what they learn. Bloodborne is an example of a game that demonstrates this well. Oh yeah, spoilers for Bloodborne too. 
Bloodborne first seems to be a gothic-esque horror Souls-like, but as you progress through the game and learn more, you realise that Yharnam has been corrupted by eldritch horrors. In fact, you can begin to see things that were invisible before when you have collected enough insight. This is metaphorical of you, the player, opening your own eyes as you learn more, and many of the enemies in Bloodborne carry the eye symbolism more literally. So it's entirely possible that the eye in Little Nightmares represents an eldritch horror too, and that is what's causing the population to turn mad. In fact, there's one particular one that it could be, Syaga. Syaga is described as a giant black-bodied green eye surrounded by a mass of tentacles. This eldritch horror is said to be extremely nihilistic, which would make sense as to why the guests seem to walk willingly to their own deaths aboard the moor, and why the Pale City residents seem to have no regard for their lives either. The black tentacles could also partially explain the leeches, perhaps they are a byproduct of this monster. But even if we don't think of individual eldritch horrors, the idea that some form of evil entity that is watching everyone in this world and driving them to madness is a very compelling theory. It would also explain why the eye symbolism appears so often as many people in Lovecraftian stories end up worshipping the elder gods in cults. Speaking of cults, if I'm doing a video on the eye, I have to mention it. Yes, the eye Illuminati. I'm still not sure if this is supposed to be a joke, but there is definitely a clear similarity between the Iron Law Nightmares and the Illuminati, the world's biggest conspiracy theory. I'm sure the developers knew that some of the players of this game would start looking for theories, and to be honest, I've said it before, creating these theory videos is essentially doing what conspiracy theorists do. Except, my video is off of fun, and it's a game. I'm not trying to claim that birds are spy cameras. But regardless, it's very interesting that this theme exists, and as I said earlier, perhaps this is just another hint that we aren't supposed to know what the eye is, and that any theory is just conspiracy. There is, however, one theory that I don't believe anyone else has covered yet. I might be wrong, but I have personally never seen a single person talk about this idea, possibly because it's slightly batshit crazy. For this theory to make sense, we need to re-establish a few things. The eye is a powerful entity, so much so that some people seem to worship it. It has an agenda, or at least some agency, and it's always watching. Everywhere you go, the eye is following you. We could go one step further and assume that the eye is meddling in this world in some way. It seems to me that the guests are being manipulated by something to make them so hungry. That's not natural hunger. Trust me, I know, I get hungry, I'm a fatty. The viewers are being influenced by the signal tower as well, but what caused that to be so powerful? And who is seemingly pushing Six to do the things that she does? Dark Six? Sure, but we still don't know why Dark Six seems to point Six towards the moor. Perhaps there is another entity pushing her forward. So what could possibly have so much power in a video game world? Who or what is always watching? And who or what seems to be pulling the strings? You. Think about it. Everything that Six and Mono do, we are watching. We are pulling their strings, literally controlling them to do our bidding. Imagine if you were a video game character, and you were somehow aware of this presence always watching and influencing you. Wouldn't you view them as gods? Even us, the people who love Little Nightmares theories, we go searching. We are looking so closely at every little thing, our eyes are literally everywhere. And we use Six or Mono to navigate this world to fit our own ends. We are the influence pushing Six forward. We are the ones that make her kill the lady. I mean, think about it. If we just didn't play the game, Six would never kill the lady. Or drop mono. Or do anything. We assume that Six was in the moor for a reason, but really that reason is because Tarsia crafted a game, and we play it. Six is simply a pawn between Tarsia and us. We are the chess master. We are the ones who have the ultimate power in this world. We can bring it to life, and we can end it whenever we like. In fact, the world of Little Nightmares doesn't exist unless we are watching. What if on some level, the people in the world are aware of this? This requires a bit of big brain thinking, but what if the entire world of Little Nightmares has no meaning? I mean, literally it doesn't. It's just a bunch of code put together by a development studio, but what if that fact is true in the game too? We've been trying to make sense of this world, but the world doesn't need to make sense. It's there purely for our entertainment. Sure, it has themes and it has messages, but without us, there would be no world at all. If we think of ourselves as the eye, no wonder we are everywhere. Everything was made for us to see it. The developers crafted everything in this world for our eyes only. Do you think that Six would care if the world was just a giant black box? No, she's not real, but we would. How boring would that game be? Every single person who has ever picked up a controller or used their mouse and keyboard to play this game 
is the I. The audience, the players, you and I. This world was made for us, and without us, there would be no world. It's a very metaphysical interpretation of the I, but it's one that I like a great deal. It makes me think about game worlds, how none of them are real, but yet we pretend that they are. You watch my theory videos because you want to know what's happening in this world, but really, nothing is. It doesn't exist. And as I have said so many times before, your interpretation of what is going on in Little Nightmares is just as valid as mine. And if we take that one step further, your canon and my canon mean that our worlds are slightly different. The ideas you have in your head as you play through these games change the way you view the world. Just like in Bloodborne, where having more insight changes how you view the world, having ideas and theories for little nightmares changes that world around you too. Nothing has changed here, the code is exactly the same as the last time you played it, but your perception has changed, so the world is now different. And in fact, if you go back and play Little Nightmares now, with this theory in mind, I guarantee you, you will see the world differently than the last time that you played it. Simply put, the eye is your perception, and it is now open. So there we have it, those are just some theories on what the eye could represent in Little Nightmares. This one was particularly difficult to make due to me being sick and due to this topic just being so abstract. I am fully aware that this is one of my most crazy theories so far, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. If you did, I hope you would like the video and consider subscribing so you don't miss my future uploads. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.